Novuyo Chuma is a writer from Zimbabwe. Her collection Shadows, a novella and short stories, was published by Quela and awarded the, tw uh, the 2014 Herman Charles Bosman Prize. She earned her MFA at the Iowa Writers Workshop, where she was a Maytag Fellow and a recipient of the Ridesen Award. Novuyo. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm going to read an excerpt from a fictional work in progress. I don't know, I begin, how fast the culture of a place seeps into you, if you can reject it, or whether you wake up one day to find the poison is too far gone. The Zulu and Posa girls of South Africa are famed for their beauty their skin a milky brown, wearing its texture on the surface, their bodies ebbing in the gentle contours of a Coca-Cola bottle. The <coughs> that's a click-click sound with your tongue, of their language a bedeviling aphrodisiac, their mutiny against education, which is really more symptomatic of South Africa's political culture, where in the minds of many apathiders in over and the system of sabotage is still in action, making them the ideal pedestals of capitalist beauty. I'm not looking M in the eye as I speak. I'm staring instead outside her office window, warmed by the sight of the sun suspended in a clear sky. Although I know very well that it's a deceptive dazzle, for the fierce winter chills permeates the January air still, making it difficult to breathe. The gray pillars of the Iowa City Public Library across from us are submerged in an inch of snow. The salted cobbled walkway of the ped mall below slathered in ice. M makes reassuring grunts as I speak. She was all of these things, I continue. And the day I went to collect my things, I found her there, standing outside the shack with her hand draped around Gary's arm, her eyes running me up and down. He no longer looked at me, Doc. He no longer looked at me, and as I stepped into his shack, that mkuku where I couldn't even stand straight without knocking against the roof with its wooden planks that let tin water when it rained. I wondered what I was doing in such a place with a man who stuck out like a sore thumb at my faculty dinner parties, who did not know that with cutlery you began from the outside in, or how to hold a fork, or that you did not eat soup the same way you ate porridge, that you pour milk before and not after the tea, but with coffee it's either or. I had known him, I had loved him, but she didn't, she couldn't, and yet there he stood in her embrace. She, she who let him fall ever so softly the moment the mob rounded the corner, so that he fell as though without a sound, a flame lily fluttering on a sultry November morn. She of the gutter, who melted into the garbage of the shanty and the shit of the sewer. She, 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 as we ran together, him and I, running and running, because that's what we do where I come from, that's what we have always done, that's what we were born doing. Our feet in lockstep, our hearts are flutter to the same flight. His sweat, my sweat, his fear, my fear, as we heard hurtled through those labyrinthine streets and into Salomon's spazza shop. The mob was patient, its feet going thud, 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 without urgency, without panic, thud, 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 its lips spitting, down with the guereguerres, down with the foreigners, down with the thieving sons of bitches, down, down, down. Viva ANC, viva, amandlang to power to the people. There is Salomon, there, there, there. Can you see him, Doc? Jolly Salomon, Salomon the wife basher. Did you hear what they did to the foreigners in Dipsklut, Doc? Did you hear what they did to the Zimbabweans, the Mozambicans, the Congolese in Kailicha? Salomon heard, he heard and he knows. That's why he's crouching behind his own wares in his own shanty, shitting himself. He knows, as it sweeps into his spazza shop, the mob, like a Sahara storm, upsets his wares and picks him up and picks us up and hurls us out into the dirt, dirt path like tumbleweed. Where are where is? Is that Mzi? Fucking foreigners. Were we not at the sports bar at the park station just the other day, sharing a beer and cheering the Kaiser chiefs on? Thieves. Salomon knows. That's why he's weeping. Weeping already as they set his shop alight. He's not even fighting like... And there is Mzee rushing out of his spazza shop with the brand new Nike shoes he was looking at the other day. He's become limp. 
like a rag doll as they pick him up, tumble with Solomon, and fling him into the fire. They lap him greedily, the flames, and oh, there he is dancing, dancing and dancing and dancing. And there's Sumaisha screaming as they grab her by the arm, screaming, I'm from Durban, I'm not from Kenya, I'm from Durban. And they let her go. They let her go, and so I too start screaming, I'm from Wazulu Natal, I'm not from Zimbabwe, I'm from Wazulu Natal. And she shouts, You're lying, Gwere Gwere. No, 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 please, I'm from Wazulu Natal. What are you doing with the Gwere Gwere, eh? he says, pointing at Gary. She's lying. She's one of them. No, no, no. I'm from KwaZulu Natal. Say it. Mzi raises his, his pinky finger. Say it. What is this in Zulu? If you're from KwaZulu Natal, you would know. Say it. Utelikane. He punches me in the stomach. Then what are you doing with this square query? Hey? He lets me go. And now he's kicking Gary. And now they're kicking Gary. And now they're screaming, jump into the fire. Who would jump into the fire? He stands up and tries to run, Gary, scrambles about like a rooster, like he knows there's nowhere to go. They bashed him with their fists and their planks and their bricks. Pa, 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 D, D, D. And then that sick crunch as his skull caved and he fell. His body was twitching, but his eyes were already gone. His face was already gone. The morning pollen dancing on his skin in fever. There he lay, squished, bloodied popo, overripe already as he fell from the tree, rotting in the midday morn as he died. And she, 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 where was she? And yet I, I do not realize I have begun crying. Only I am not, I'm crying not with my eyes, but with my mouth. Strange sounds that jerk me back and forth. And M is whispering gently, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. But it's not okay, because I'm suddenly overwhelmed by the urge to laugh. Although why I want to laugh, I don't know. Outside, freshmen are slashing past in clusters, waving Hawkeye flags, their faces painted black and yellow, their youthful rowdiness partly irritating, partly endearing. Opposite me, M's reassuring grunts have taken on a rhythmic quality. I didn't know Gary Stoning was going to be big, Doc, that somebody had filmed the whole thing on their phone and would put it up on YouTube. You can't see me on the clip, thankfully, but what I saw which really hurt me, Doc, were the little kids standing in the crowd watching like it was a film on TV. On the clip, you can see Gary flapping in the water in the gutter, and behind him, Solomon's shack is on fire. I suppose, perhaps, that we can be thankful to whoever stood filming a man being stoned, because it's what put the matter into the sights of the New York Times, which ran the story before the South African Daily Mail, causing some kind of political brouhaha. I did not know that in his death, Gary would cease to be a person and swell into a statement, into a Facebook page, into a Twitter account, into a weapon of protest. You should have seen it, Doc. The rich residents of Santon City picketing with his face on their placards, chanting, say no to xenophobia. It wasn't for him they were picketing, of course, but for themselves. One man came out and said it on the show, why are we so angry on SABC One? He said, I don't understand what's going, blowing the brown hair out of his blue eyes. I live in a middle-class suburb and I don't understand. I'm very confused as to why this is happening close to my own house. The attacks are happening in Alexandra in the shanty right next door. Why is the shanty so close to us? I'm confused and disturbed by why it's so physically close to my house. I just want to come home to a safe haven. So this really disturbs me. I just don't feel safe anymore around these black people. I don't know why I went to Mzee's court hearing, what it was I hoped it would accomplish. Perhaps I wanted him to have something redeeming to say, to see him as a human being. I wanted answers, Doc. I just didn't have the right questions. And he, Mzee, just stood there in the docks, smirking. He was wearing the Nike shoes from Salomon's shop with the laces m missing. When they asked him why he did it, he said it was because killing thieving Gwere was fun.